Hi and welcome to lab number two. Today we'll learn how can we configure Active Directory Domain Services and uh, DNS on our vCenter, uh, which is a virtualized environment provided by Champlain College. Now, as you know that any sizable environment needs a domain name server um, because uh, we don't need to manually associate the IP addresses with the host names. In a Windows environment, you'll often find that the DNS server and Active Directory lookup services called the Active Directories are combined in one platform. We'll configure um, such a system on a Windows Server 2019 virtual environment and would provide a domain name and Active Directory services for the 1005-24 um, network, um, which uh, we configured last time. And uh, if you remember, we worked on PFSense and we tried to see that how can we route the traffic. Now, this is a typical setup on a vCenter. I'll create another video separately on uh, setting up a domain, Active Directory, and DHCP um, in VMware Workstation. Um, it's highly recommended to set up something like that on your home PCs as well, so that if you want to test certain things yourself, you can do it outside the vSphere as well. Now, um, just to get started, as you know, we'll be setting up Active Directory and Domain Services, etc. Um, it becomes a bit difficult to get rid of the thing. So just to be on the safer side, I would highly recommend that if you're going to work on any of these machines, um, you must first create a snapshot of that. So in order to create the snapshot of our Windows 10 machine, I'll right click on this one and you'll see an option of snapshot. So you can create a snapshot of this one by clicking on take a snapshot and uh, rename it so that uh, you can easily um, understand the, uh, um, the naming convention of it and you can revert it back to its original configuration. So I'll maintain one snapshot of it and if everything goes well, um, we can release this snapshot so that we can save some space on the storage. Um, now we are going to do the same for our server operating system as well. For server also, you're going to AD01 and you'll right click on it and then you'll go to snapshots and uh, take a snapshot of it. Uh, I'll say it before domain setup and I'll create a snapshot of it. Now, if you'd like to revert it back to the previous state, all you need to do it, for example, you'll go to the snapshots and you'll um, see the snapshot that you have created by revert to the latest snapshot or you can manage the snapshot so it would show you that where are you and uh, when was the snapshot created and you can revert it back to its original state. Now once that's done we can start our uh, workstation which is Windows 10. Uh, we can just double click on it or you can click on power on and it would start the virtual machine. Uh, we can launch uh, a web console or a remote console. We'll uh, launch it shortly. But uh, before that, we'll have to make some changes to the network adapter of our uh, domain server. Now, um, you'll have to go to the edit settings over here first and uh, you'll have to check that your network adapter should be uh, connected to your LAN. So in order to change that, I'll click on it and I'll select LAN over here and I'll press OK and then I'll press OK. Now we are ready to start our virtual machine. Now we'll start our uh, Windows Server operating system by clicking Start. It's loading in the meantime. What I would like to do is that I'll go to my Windows 10 machine and I'll try to make sure that if it has the internet access. But if you can see, if I'll um, open the browser and if I'll try to open google.com, it won't open the page since it does not have the connectivity and if you remember we configured the firewall. But since we did not start the firewall, we'll not get access to uh, internet. So for that, we'll have to power on our firewall as well. You can click on it and start it. And uh, then we'll um, check once it's up that if we are able to access it or not. Just make sure that you have access to the internet before proceeding to the AD setup. Otherwise, you'll have to start the entire process again. 
Now as you can see our firewall is up so if we'll go to our Windows 10 machine you can see the sign exclamation mark disappear from here. So if we are going to refresh it we can go to Google page or let's try to open the website of the college and we can access it from here. So um, we have our Windows 10 machine up, we have our Active Directory up, which is the domain services, uh, which is the server, uh, not a domain as yet, and we have our firewall running over here. So if you'll um, power on your server operating system, since this is the first time we are starting it, it's asking you to change the password. Now make sure the password that you're going to keep over here, you do remember it because if you'll forget it, it would be difficult, maybe you'll have to reinstall all the domain so have a difficult password over here press ok um, I would highly recommend to have a combination of uh, alphanumeric uppercase and lowercase number so I'm going to go for a difficult password um, keep notes of uh, the passwords that you're selecting over here just to make sure that um, whatever you have entered you remember it and you have proper documentation of it after that i'll press next and uh, it would change the password which is the administrator password of server operating system as you can see it can it has showed the message that the password has been changed press ok and it would load the first interface of server operating system as you can see our uh, windows 10 machine our firewall and server operating system all of them are up now, uh, just to make things a bit simple, uh, what I usually do it, I personalize my desktop so that I can perform rest of the operations easily. So I'll just go to themes and I would like to have the desktop icons on my desktop. So I'll just select it from here so that I have uh, the easy access to the things on my desktop. The other thing that I usually do is that I go to the control panel and uh, large icons and I usually create the shortcuts of these things on my desktop I'll show you why later but at the moment I'm just creating the uh, shortcuts of them on my desktop so once that's done um, let's get ourselves a bit familiarized with the kind of interface that we have in server operating system so if we'll click start you'll find a server manager over here now the server manager is the main console of any operating system uh, regardless which version of uh, server you're using from Microsoft but it gives us a picture of uh, what things are installed on the server and uh, how can you configure it um, if you want to add certain roles and features you, you can click on add roles and features or you can click on manage and click add roles and features as well if you go to tools you can see the basic uh, features which are installed on the server since it's the uh, basic um, interface of it we haven't configured anything so you don't see anything here once we'll add the roles they'll appear in this side of the window now since we are configuring uh, or we will be configuring a domain on this one so uh, the most important thing is that we must have a IP address associated with um, this server as you can see that we don't have any IP address so remember we created the shortcut of network and sharing center you can change the adapter settings from here or you can click uh, on this one and go to internet settings it's the same thing uh, but I'll click on Ethernet and if I'll click on properties um, and I'll click on TCP IP and properties you can see that there is no IP address assigned over here so now we'll assign a static IP address for this one so that we can access and it can see the other computers on the network as well now that's the uh, static IP address that we would define for the server operating system uh, and if you remember 10052 uh, was the address of our uh, firewall so that's what we have uh, provided over here as the default gateway and the DNS server after that just press OK and press close and close this one and close this one as well so now it might give you a pop-up saying that would you like to connect to the network for me it didn't show me anything like that but as you can see 
the uh, exclamation mark disappeared from here it means that we should have an access to the internet so if i'll go to ping.8.8.8 it should give me a response that's good it means that we have the connectivity to the internet and we can even ping champlain college website to see that we are getting a response on that as well so it means that we have the access to the internet next step is that we must check that if we are in the right time zone and uh, uh, we can do it um, by going to date and time over here in control panel you can change the time zone if it's different or you can go to internet time and uh, just update it so that uh, you have the right time for the uh, server operating system the other thing is that uh, uh, since we are setting a domain on this one go to the properties of the computer and you can see that the computer name is um, a bit different since it's the default installation of it so i would highly recommend to change it by clicking on change and rename it as uh, ad01 ad01 dash your first name and press ok now it would require a restart so we will restart the computer and then we'll continue with the rest of the installation as you can see restart it now as you can see our server is up and uh, let's try to check a couple of things on this one that if the changes are reflected as we renamed the uh, server and uh, um, we tried to um, change the time of it and rest of the things. So in order to check that, uh, we are again in server manager and if you'll click on local server, you'll be able to see the name of the computer as ad01-myname and uh, rest of the things like the IP address of the ethernet and the date and time. So everything's good so far. Now if everything's okay, we are ready to set up a domain on this server. So in order to do that, we'll go back to the dashboard again and uh, we can either click add roles and features from here or we can click manage and click add roles and features from this menu as well. But before that, you can notice that Active Directory domain services are not listed over here. So we'll click on add roles and features and then click next um, role based feature we'll keep with the default setup over here um, and that's the server that we have on which we would like to set up a domain and press next now in this one we are going to select only active directory domain services once that's done press add features now you can see that you have an option of DNS over here as well, but I'm not going to select it at the moment since it would automatically install DNS and I'll show you that where it would show. For example, if you're setting up a Active Directory and you have a DNS server already somewhere else and you just want to include it to this one, I'll show it to you later. Now if you'll press next on this one, um, you'll be able to add certain more features over here if you want but since this is the basic setup of it we are not going for anything else we are just going for active directory domain services we have already selected it then press next uh, we can uh, ignore the settings on this one as well and press next and install now it would take a while to set up the things and uh, get the domain ready on your system now it has completed the setup now you can see there is an option over here uh, it says that promote the server to a domain controller so the setup is complete but now you'll have to promote it to a domain controller sometimes it happens like for by mistake if you click close over here um, you still have an option to set it up over here so if you'll click on this flag it would still show you the option to promote this to a domain controller so we'll click on this one and here we'll have to select uh, uh, we have three options add a domain controller to an existing domain if you have a domain and you are adding it as a secondary domain or something or add a domain to a forest which you have already in your environment since we don't have it this is the first one so we are going to select add a new forest and we'll name it for example my name dot local 
now um, we will have a warning later I'll show you since we are just setting it up for the local setup it's not a um, fully um, it's not a proper domain uh, just like uh, .com .gov or .net so we'll just select as say a .local or you'll have to enter your name .local and press next now it's uh, asking you the functional level of it since this is server 2019 but the forest functional level the maximum would be 2016 in this one so if you're installing it on server 2022 or any later uh, operating systems you'll have to go for the most latest updated uh, forest level of this one since we have 2016 we'll keep it as it is we won't make any changes but uh, make sure that you have a pass password over here and you do remember it since it is required um, to recover the directory in case of an error uh, you would use it in production if things went terribly wrong so that's the only way to recover it so once the password is entered I'll press next and uh, create a DNS delegation no I don't want to I'll just press next and it would automatically show you a net BIOS domain name and as you can see it has shown my first name over there I'll just press next this is the default setup if you want in a production environment you can change it to something else but we'll keep it as it is and we'll press next now um, we have uh, uh, some settings shown up here uh, whatever we have selected and you can even view this script by clicking on this one and you can run it in PowerShell in order to set it up um, in a quick way so um, if you want you can keep a copy of it and press next now it's showing you that um, prerequisite checks are all good these are some of the warnings you can ignore them and you can work on it later but we are good to proceed so we'll just press install Now, as you can see it has completed the installation and it would automatically restart the server and it would restart it as a domain administrator so that you'll have to um, enter the username and password um, which you provided earlier where we talked about that you must have a really secure password so it took a while and uh, now we are back so you'll send control or delete from here and if you'll see over here uh, my name and administrator is appearing it means that I'm the domain admin now keep an eye that there is a difference between the local admins and the domain administrator the domain admins have the power over the items within the Active Directory domain and whereas the local administrator will have the power on the things which are there on this operating system on this server only so that's the difference between the both things so now I'll enter my password and try to log into my server after entering the password press, press next and let it load now if you remember um, since we are logged in and uh, uh, we can see our domain and if you will right click on this one go to the properties of it and uh, you'll try to see the uh, domain so you can see the domain say dot local is over here so we are logged into our domain server now I was saying that if you remember we created this shortcut now this is just for your own reference if you want to see that whatever we have installed like active directory domain services and uh, DNS etc they are all appearing here on our list so just to make it simple I sometimes uh, um, copy some of them and if you would like to open it you have an easy access on the desktop as well um, other than the option that you have uh, your server manager and you can find the things uh, there as well so here it has listed all the services that it has so if you want to um, open any of the services for example DNS or Active Directory services you can find it over here so if I'll open my DNS uh, we can see that uh, uh, we have the forward lookup zones reverse lookup zones and all those things so if I'll go to the properties of my DNS over here um, you'll be able to find the forwarders over here um, this is the address but um, if you'll check one thing that it has changed the 
uh, settings in its network interface card so if we will click on this one and we will click on properties and uh, on TCP IP as you can see that initially we entered 10.0.5.2 now it has changed it to 127.0.0.1 now what happens is that your DNS server um, has now pointed it to 127.0.0.1 which is a uh, loopback address to the adapter for the Active Directory. Now it's pointing back to itself because the DNS queries which are not handled locally are forwarded to your firewall which would then forward them to the DNS server. Now let's try to add our first uh, DNS record and uh, the problem in that is that uh, that our firewall actually which is accessed by um, the Active Directory um, can be cannot be accessed by the name. Um, it can only be accessed by the IP address because that's what it understands. We have not provided any details associated to the firewall. So we'll have to let our DNS know that this is the name and this is the IP address of the server so that um, other users on the network as well as the Active Directory can comfortably find it on the network itself. Before that, let me show you the difference. Uh, for example, if I'm going to PowerShell and um, if for example I'll write my host name and I'll press enter it would show me that it's Active Directory 1 and my name. Now if I'll try to ping the IP address of our firewall which is 10.0.5.2 it will be able to resolve it by the IP address. But if I would try to resolve it by the name of the firewall which is FW um, 01 dash your name remember we did it last time it won't be able to find it on the network since it does not have the values associated for that so your dns does not know that what's the name against an ip address so that it can resolve the communications so in order to do that we'll go to our server manager we will click on tools and we'll go to DNS then we'll go to our DNS double click on it and you can go from here as well go to the forward lookup zone and then you'll click on your name over here the name of your DNS server right click on it and select new AA record then we'll enter our firewall details like FW 01 dash name of it so you can see it's changing it over here as well so then we'll just press uh, uh, enter the IP address of our firewall was uh, 10.0.5.2 and we'll create uh, or check on this create associated pointer PTR record as well and then you will press add host now as you can see there is a warning over here the reason for that is that when the host is added the capability to resolve a host by its host name is enabled but the reverse lookup is not there so we'll have to create a reverse lookup for that as well but at the moment we'll just press ok and as you can see um, that's done so uh, we'll have to close this one but you can see that the firewall record now appeared over here before we had for the active directory now we have for the firewall here as well now to create a reverse lookup we'll go to reverse lookup zone we'll right click on it and then we'll select new zone and then you'll click next it would be a primary zone we'll not make any changes here press next we'll keep the default settings over here i would like to create a ip4 reverse lookup zone press next and here i'll have to enter the ip address which would be 10 dot 0.5 and then as you can see it has uh, created a reverse lookup for that press next i would keep the settings as it is press next and finish so as you can see it has created a reverse lookup zone over here now it's added but if you don't see it over here you'll have to click on this refresh button so that you'll see it over there if it doesn't appear here you can right click on this one click on new pointer record you can type in an ip address for example dot two 
and uh, you can select your domain forward lookup go to your address and then you can click on this one and press ok and we can do the same thing for our other address which is appearing for two and then we'll select the active directory here as well so that we have both of them listed under the reverse lookup which is this one so now we have both of them listed under forward lookup zone as well now that was it as far as the dns was concerned now we'll try to add some users to our domain controller so in order to do that again we'll click on tools and we'll select active directory users and computers we'll expand it and then we'll go to our domain over here let's adjust it a little bit and uh, come on and then i'll go to users and here i can add users now in order to add a user i'll right click on this one and i'll click new and i'll add a user over here now whenever you join any organization if they are creating your account that's the same procedure how we add users to our list now in order to add a user to the users group i'll right click on this one and then i'll select new and i'm going to select a user now since we are going to add a domain admin we are going to rename it in a way so that we can easily distinguish that this is a domain admin now entering the details uh, after that we'll press next it would ask for a password enter the password and then uncheck user must change the password on next logon just select password never expires press next and finish so now you can see it as a user over here now we want to make him a group admin or a domain admin so for that we have two ways to do it either we can go to member of and add him as a group admin or a domain admin or the other thing is that we can right click on it and click on add to a group now you can either type in domain admins or you can click on advanced and click find over here you'll see domain admin listed over here simple click d and you'll find um, domain admins over here double click on it press ok and the user would be added to the domain admin group now if you will double click on it again and go to member of now you can see that this user is part of domain admins as well so now uh, since we added this user to the domain admin group we'll create another account without having the uh, without giving him the privileges of the domain users or anything so we'll just follow the steps and uh, create another account over here now here as you can see that i have created uh, a regular user account here as well um, if I'll open uh, the other user account, um, you can see that in the member of, it is just a domain user, whereas our domain administrator have the account privileges um, where he's part of the domain admin. Now, let's try to go back to our workstation and uh, go to the settings of the network interface card of this one and point the DNS to 10055 uh, which is the IP address of our domain controller over here. So um, in order to do that I'll go to the uh, my uh, adapter and then I'll go to properties and then I'll click on TCP IP version 4 and as you can see before we entered the DNS server address as our firewall now we are going to change it to our active directory and the address for that was 10.0.5.5 please press ok and then close it now we have changed the address of DNS on this one so before we'll join it to the domain, I want to check a couple of things on PowerShell on our computer um, just to make sure that our setup is fine and whether we are able to access the things on it or not. So if I'll try to find, find the host name, it told me that it's workstation01 
then if I'll check who am I um, it would tell me that I'm workstation 01 and the account is uh, Sayed on Sayed Ali then if I'll ping the firewall this time uh, we must not get a response for it since we it is not joined and it does not have the record for that so if I'll type in Sayed it won't show me anything since it is still not joined to the domain but that's fine now if I'll try to um, NS lookup and uh, I'll enter 10.0.5.2 it should give me the record for the AD1 and firewall one so it recognizes that as well and if we are going to ping the um, firewall which is uh, uh, by the name of sayed.sayed.local we can see that it is able to look up the details for that as well. Now, now finally the last thing is let's try to ping the domain as well and there you go. It means that everything's fine, even the workstation can see the domain as well. Now since we have checked everything, now it's the time to um, join our computer to the domain. But before that, I would like to show you on your domain controller, if you'll go to computers, we don't have any computers over here since we haven't joined any computers to the domain and they have not reported to the Active Directory. So let's go to our uh, Windows 10 machine and we would like to join it to the domain. So I'll go to the properties of it, then I'll change the settings on it. And uh, here I'll click on change. And before we selected a work group over here. Now, since we are joining it to the domain, I'll just write the name of the domain over here, which is Sayed in my case, and I'll press OK. So it should ask me a username and password that I provided. So I'll enter the username and password in order to join my computer to the domain. So the password, username and password should be administrator and the password that I would use or which I used for my domain controller is this. And I'll press OK. So it would take a while and then it would show me that if I was successful in joining the domain or not. As you can see that it showed me a message that you have successfully joined the domain. Now I use the main domain administrator password um, just to make it simple so that you can see that both passwords would work. Remember we created an account called uh, uh, domain admin where we added a user to the domain admin group. You can either use that account or the administrator account. It's not recommended to use the administrator's account since if the password is leaked out it could affect or your domain can be compromised. It's better to use domain admins in order to do that. Now, um, if I'll close it, it would ask me to restart the computer, but the change here you can see is that, remember we named the domain as syed.local. You can find it over here that the work group has been changed to this one where now um, this computer is part of the domain. So we'll restart it and then we'll see that if it is really part of the domain or not. Now I'll try to log in through the account that I was using before and uh, let me see if it would let me log in or not. Yep, it's there. So I am logged in as a regular user. I'm not logged in as a domain user, but still this computer is connected to the domain. So that's the difference that I used my local account, but I joined my computer to the domain. As you can see, the domain name is appearing there. And if I'll click on change settings on this one, and if I'll change on this one, the domain is appearing as this one. But I am logged in as the local user account. Now I would show you that how can we uh, log into the computer using the account that we created. In the meantime, if we'll go to our Active Directory and if I'll refresh the computers over here, you can see this computer is here now. It means that it has successfully reported to the domain and it is associated so we know that this computer is now part of the domain. So in order to check the account or the domain account, so I'll sign out from the local account which I have. And now I'll try to log in using the, um, uh, the domain account which we created. 
So as you can see, the domain name is appearing here as syed. I'll enter the username and password. So after entering the username and password, press enter and it would accept that username and password as well. Now, once it would load, I would show you the difference between the two accounts. Now you remember that the account that I'm logged in with, we created it over here on our Active Directory. We didn't create it on this computer, which is our Windows 10 computer. So in order to check that, I'll click on this PC and uh, I'll right click on it and I'll go to manage. And if I'll go to local users and users, you can see that I have this account over here, but I don't have the other account which I'm logged in and my username was as mentioned on the screen over here. So the account is on the Active Directory and since this computer is part of the domain, it accepted the password and it allowed me to log into the computer. Now let's sign it out as a last option and let me show you that what happens when we disable the accounts on the domain. Now uh, this is the normal user account that we used and I told you that this is the account name um, that I would try to log in. But due to any reasons if the user left the organization or anything I would disable the account. So now the account is disabled and you can see an arrow mark in front of which which indicates that this account has been disabled. Now let's try to log in again to um, the computer using the same username and password and let's try to press enter. And as you can see, it showed you an option. The account has been disabled. Please see your administrator. So that's the main functionality of a domain controller that we can add DNS. We can even add DHCP to the same Active Directory. And that's how we manage the accounts on Active Directory. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. Take care. Bye-bye.